Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're playing the Total War Warhammer 2 Battle Replay. This is a community cast sent in by Hero of Rome, who's not actually called Hero of Rome in this particular battle, and also it was a friend he was playing against, and he sent Hero of Rome the replay, which he then sent to me, so he's in the red corner. So there's a guy called Hero of Rome that's not called Hero of Rome right now, but it is Hero of Rome who's playing as the opposite team to the replay he sent in. Yes? He's playing as the High Elves. So, Hero Rome is the High Elves. So, as you can see, he's against Vampire Counts, so he's got Frontline of Spearmen. You've got to have some Spearmen. You've got to go with some width, right? You can't go all cheap. It just does not work against the Vampire Counts. You just get too overwhelmed unless you can go fairly wide. You've got to have the Spearmen to, you know, bog down some units and uh, stem the tide. Also here, he's got some Loathen Sea Guard, so it means he's got a lot of cheap arrow fire, but they can fight off zombies. Um, usually I say Loathen Sea Guard are a bit crap, honestly. Um, I think they're a bit rubbish. But this is one matchup I really do like them, uh, because frankly, yeah, Blood Knights will tear right through them, so will, you know, even Black Knights, but they will be able to fight off zombies better than standard archers, and that is very important. That is something you really need to be in control of. So, having some archers that can fend for themselves against the thing that's going to be harassing them the most. It makes them worthwhile. So I really like this. So Loath and Sea Guard in the back, three of them. And also the Everqueen's Court Guards. So uh, Everqueen's Court Guards, obviously fire and magic damage, great against ethereal units, great against anything that regenerates, and a ton of armor piercing. So it's going to be great against things like zombie dragons and blood knights and anything like that with a lot of armor. Um, real multi-purpose, but a massive scary target. Uh, they're going to get lumbered by a lot of enemy units. They're going to get bogged down as quickly as they possibly can. So you've got to guard them, but... If they can fire unaccosted for a while, they will get crazy high value. Also here, he's got some Phoenix Guard. Phoenix Guard with that anti-large uh, anti and anti-armor. Brilliant against all sorts of things like Blood Knights. They have enough armor themselves that they can shrug off damage from most sources. So they're really resilient. Huge leadership. Really good melee defense. Very difficult for them to get killed by trash. And there's going to be a lot of trash, because it's vampire counts. Also, he has the Keepers of the Flame. So these guys are great in the fact that they have magic damage, great against ethereal units, but also they explode if they die. So if they do get bogged down or cycle charged by things like Blood Knights or whatever, any casualties they're taking from those dangerous sources, they will be able to do damage in return by exploding. I know, seems extreme, but hey, they do it great. Also here, the Fireborn. So fire damage, great against all those regenerating units, but also they have an anti-large bonus, unlike the normal Dragon Princes. So they are super useful. And he does have regrowth to heal them up if they get damaged, which is fantastic. So Teclis here, I think, is a brilliant choice. I think Alariel's pretty damn good too, but this is one that I think Teclis really shines in. Because he's got the net, so great to stop something and then shoot the hell out of it. Brilliant. Really good for taking out those troublesome units. Also, Flaming Sword of Ruin. Put that on anything that's fighting anything with generation or is ethereal, and they will kill it very, very quickly. So Flaming Sword of Ruin has a lot of utility. Enfeebling Foe, great for killing the sort of troublesome things if you can pin them to the ground. And uh, Flock of Doom, great if stuff blobs up, which it inevitably will. And the regrowth helps keep Martial Mastery going, and it's just really useful. Also, with the Potion of Shoroi, he can keep himself healed up uh, without having to expend Winds of Magic. So he's a very good utility lord, provided you can keep him out of trouble. He is, he is a bit flimsy. He is a little flimsy. But... As long as you can keep him safe, he's going to get a lot of work done. Now, as opponent, um, I absolutely love this Vampire Count's army because there's no Mortis Engine. He's doing it without the Mortis Engine, and that's almost a given, right, that you will see a Mortis Engine. Instead, he's decided to go wider and have slightly more elite infantry in here, which I think is really interesting. Also, as the Red Duke in the air. It's the Red Duke, obviously fantastic, and uh, he's in the air, so he can just run around, you know, above everything and uh, be dropping zombies on top of people, and he can goon things pretty well. He can jump down and attack something, and then and be off again and he's a much smaller target than if he was on the zombie dragon so it's gonna be a lot harder to kill from range which is very nice so a lot of utility out of him and elsif will just make any lord or hero just absolute trash for you know quite some time so here you can see he has blood knights on the other side he has blood knights and he also has varix reavers varix reavers i think are brilliant in this matchup they're great on the charge you know pretty good damage and uh yeah frankly they're just very useful they regenerate themselves you don't have to babysit them so much obviously you still got to cycle charge them a lot but still they're fantastic um i'm gonna speed things up now actually because uh, it's a long one so we've got the sternsman as well again they regenerate on their own great combat stats a load of anti-infantry there's plenty of other things like skeleton warriors and grave guard konigstein's stalkers that poison damage as well more skeleton warriors some spearmen dotted around so there's some good units here so uh but also a banshee bit of a risky pick with the uh, sort of abundance of magic damage but 
Because it's just one banshee, um, it's very difficult to then, you know, use Flaming Sword of Ruin on a group of things like Spearmen. It feels like a waste. So, um, yeah, it's tough to get rid of the banshee. So here, a net on the Varix Reavers. And they are going to start taking a tremendous amount of damage. Here you can see Spearmen are trying to block the Skeleton Warriors. Uh, here, though, Blood Knights have managed to get into the back. But the Phoenix Guard are poised to get on top of them. There are, of course, uh, the Die Pack as well. And some Bats, which are both stupidly useful at harassing the back line. The Bats are dealing with the Everqueen's Court Guard. But uh, they're still able to fire somewhat. But uh, you need to get rid of them. And I think the Fireborn are in a brilliant position to just charge them get rid of them completely and then go on the defense again because he does have the keepers of the flame and the phoenix guard that are able to defend the flanks so the stuff right in the back get on top of it quickly with the fireborn to free up these missiles you want these missiles going and now a load of attack buffs and here the vampire counts player is being very crafty he's putting his units into very thin lines so he can just run them through without them getting stuck on anything so suddenly the back line is really compromised but he hasn't brought anything new to the table he's just squeezed in through the gaps which is very clever you know, it's a very, it's a very simple thing to do, but you don't see a lot of people do it. You just see them force, like force pathing the units through and getting them stuck on the edges. You know, it's it's not as easy. But by moving into these formations, you can just sneak through, which is really nice. So here, the Blood Knights are taking an absolute beating. Um, it's pretty ridiculous. But the Lothar Sea Guard have been caught up by the Sternsmen. They have no hope. In the back, the Everqueen's Court Guard are still going somehow, but they're just completely covered in units. Lothar Sea Guard are not able to protect this, and the Phoenix Guard are pretty slow. So that is the problem. It's very difficult for the Phoenix Guard to keep reacting to these things. But they are going to get on top of this stuff. Hopefully keep them all safe. Here's a nice flock of doom. That's going to get some good extra damage onto all these units. Not a huge amount of the Banshee though. It's not great for single models. But anyway, the Fireborn are running around the back trying to deal with things like the Dire Pack and the Fell Bats. Which is good. You want to get rid of them. But playing them more defensively can often help. Because the Everqueen Court Guard, they could have been freed up by now. These Blood Knights might have been dead for good, and uh, the Everqueen Court Guard could continue to shoot at things. Here you can see these Varix Reavers nearing the healing cap already, but they're still very healthy. And they're going to get on top of the Lothan Sea Guard, and they're going to get some good damage in there. So, pretty tough. So, Blood Knights, they're coming back in. Uh, but yeah, the Everqueen's Court Guard just getting bogged down so much. And now he's in a horrible position where he has to use Phoenix Guard to stop zombies, which... Feels like a massive waste, doesn't it? So, um, it's pretty rough. Here you can see the Red Duke is trying to hunt Teclis, which, uh, is pretty amusing. Um, you know, we'll see a lot of this in the battle. Um, this happens constantly. It's pretty amusing. They're both really being wily as they can. Um, it's pretty funny. But anyway, Everqueen Court Guard, they are starting to fire again into the Varix Reavers, which is definitely good news. And here the Fireborn are charging in to try and deal with these Blood Knights. There are Spearmen helping as well, but with the Varix Reavers charging in this way, and these Blood Knights are going to start maneuvering to get into here as well. The Fireborn will be under a lot of pressure from all this cavalry. And the Banshee is coming in. The Banshee, brilliant for dealing with things like the Fireborn. Because the Fireborn, they've got great fire resist, but they also have physical resist, which is going to get ignored completely. So the Banshee will be able to get as much damage as she wants into these Fireborn. They have nothing protecting them from her. Not even armor. She has great armor piercing too. So the Banshee is going to do really nicely here. And she is a nice cheap form of terror as well, which is definitely useful. Definitely handy to, you know, help break break all the spearmen and things. So, very cool. So the Blood Knight's getting a beautiful charge into the Fireborn. You can see the Fireborn's health is depleting horribly. They are so bogged down here. It's uh, a little bit a little bit scary. But Phoenix Guard still very healthy. Everqueen Court Guard amazingly back online. Lothan Sea Guard as well firing into the Blood Knights. Here you can see a flock of Doom has come down. But honestly, I think that may have been a little bit hasty. You need to keep those Winds of Magic to heal things like the Fireborn. You've got to you've got to use the big spells sometimes. Here an Elseef has been used, but somehow the Red Duke ended up just completely caught in all this. I'm not entirely sure how that happened. But anyway, um, so Lone the Seagull still being chased off. Blood Knights very, very injured, but somehow still going. These Blood Knights very, very, very injured, still somehow going. It's um, a little bit mad. It's a little bit crazy how these guys are able to survive all this. It's um, unbelievable how much damage they've taken, but they are still going. And here, some of the spearmen are getting uh, routed off. And now the skeleton spearmen can join. And you see there are zombie... Uh, sorry, grave guard coming in here. Um, yeah, all the high elf units start to get surrounded as they've been picked off, you know, one unit at a time. I mean, Lothan Sea Guard fleeing in all directions. It's, uh, it's not good. And there's the Fireborn, only seven left and only 225 health. They are not in a good way. They will no longer be all that useful. Um, they might get one charge off, but that's about it. So here you can see the Banshee is now hunting Teclis. So Teclis is still running around. Amazingly, he's barely been touched. I'm not sure if he has been touched yet, honestly. It's pretty impressive. So here, another Flock of Doom. Again, I worry this was hasty. I worry this might have been hasty. Um, you know, you really want the regrowths to keep the Keepers of the Flame and the Phoenix Guard safe because they're going to be what's going to start, you know, basically winning the game here. Um, he doesn't really have anything else 
that's going to be able to hold up as well as the Keepers of Flame. So you've got to keep them safe first and foremost. Because frankly, these guys can kill everything pretty happily. Um, provided, you know, they're allowed to sit in combat with them. They're going to take some cycle charges and things from what's left of the cavalry, but they're not going to be able to cycle charge all that long before they start taking some more casualties, because they are very injured themselves. So, anyway. Uh, here you can see Everqueen's Court Guard still somehow going, but um, still bogged down by uh, Skeleton Warriors, and now the Red Duke is running in. More zombies have been summoned on top of these guys, just to stop them from being able to join this fight and save the Everqueen's Court Guards that are under heavy attack. Over here, these spearmen are somehow still going, and uh, the Keepers of the Flame, they're fighting some really elite stuff here. I mean, the Sternsman and Graveguard, both great anti-infantry units, and the Keepers of the Flame are holding out. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, here, though, the Banshee chasing off things in that direction. I think the Banshee might have been useful over here to help terrify the Spearmen away. Um, I think that might have been nice. She can sit and fight the Spearmen all day. Their anti-large bonus means nothing against the Banshee. You know, she's only a lady. She's not a big one. So... Yeah, it would be pretty good, right? Be able to get rid of these spearmen. Then suddenly you've got two more units that can surround the Keepers of the Flame and keep them busy. But, uh, you know, the Red Duke is coming here to try and help, and more zombies are going to be summoned to try and keep the Keepers of the Flame busy. Over here, amazingly, the Everqueen's Court Guard haven't broken yet. I don't know how they're still going, honestly. But, with the amount of ammunition they have left, they have just not been able to make use of themselves. Apart from, from being a massive distraction, I guess. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of work to keep these guys uh, inactive. So anyway... Now the Phoenix Guard are trying to come and meet up with uh, with their, you know, bigger, cooler brothers, the Keepers of the Flame. Teclis is coming in here too, but uh, here you can see Blood Knights are now trying to hunt down Teclis, who has taken a bit of damage now. So he's having to bob and weave. More Blood Knights coming in for a pincer movement, so he's now running towards his Phoenix Guard, and he's managed it. Now uh, you can see the Blood Knights having to run away, but again, another Flock of Doom, which I'm just not sure was worthwhile here. Um, I just, I don't know, it seems risky. It's just a lot of winter magic he's spending, um, getting flocks of doom on things that are able to get out of the area of effect very quickly. I just don't think he's getting value out of that spell at the moment. I think it's a great idea, you know, for big old blobs of infantry, but I think when cavalry are running in and out, I just don't think you're going to get the value out of it. So it's it's risky. He's doing what he can, though, because he's clearly on the edge. He doesn't have much. The vampire coats don't have much. No one has much. So whatever you can do to try and contribute is good, but... I think he had to be patient here. I think that would have helped him. Anyway, Blood Knights trying to get in with their cycle charging, but the fact is they have almost no health. And if they do charge and kill a you know an A and E model from the Keepers of Flame, that model's going to explode, and that might be enough to get rid of them. Honestly, so here he is trying to chase. More of them are exploding because of zombies and skeleton spearmen, which is a bit embarrassing. Oh dear! But uh, some damage is hitting these guys, which is great. Over here, Teclis did manage to sneak out of this fight, and uh, the Red Duke is completely bogged down in these Phoenix Guard. Unfortunately, though, the Banshee is fighting these Phoenix Guard, which is great because again she gets to negate that physical resist, and she has her own physical resist that these Phoenix Guard can't negate. The Keepers of the Flame, though, they do have the magic damage, so um, the Banshee being over here is brilliant. Um, you really want these Keepers of Flame and Phoenix Guard to be on top of each other. But right now, they just aren't being given the space to be able to sort of reunite with each other. Um, so Teclis is having to just do what he can to keep out of the way. And there's not really anywhere dense enough um, for him to hide in. So it's very difficult. He's going to have to keep moving. So here, some Spearmen have come back, and they're going to help deal with the Skeleton Spearmen. Um, amazingly, these guys are super, super injured. They're wavering. I mean, how are these Blood Knights still going? It's unbelievable. So here, the Red Duke is coming in for Teclis once again. Phoenix Guard, they're going to sit here and fight these guys for an awfully long time. But of course, they have lost... Uh, both of these units have lost Martial Mastery, so their melee defense has gone way down. I say way down. Keeps the flame still on 53 that just really is a credit to how great these units are. Um, the other Phoenix Guard, uh, 44. So it's nuts. I mean, that is a huge, huge bonus to their melee defense from being the Regiment of Renown. Anyway, Teclis is trying to hide amongst them. And these Blood Knights do look like they've had it. Looks like they've finally had it. So Teclis is even coming out to have a pop at them. Fair enough. Good revenge. And uh, these units are able to start coming back in. There is no longer enough units for the vampire counts to keep all this stuff pinned and keep these guys separated and together they're going to get a lot more work done they can help us you know keep techless safe a lot easier you know with these combined force the magic damage is going to help against the banshee and there's some spearmen I mean, they're not really going to do a whole, mu a whole lot, but there's just more bodies, right? That's always good. Just more fighters is good. Uh, if more zombies get summoned, I guess Spearman can help. But here, um, you can see Teclis is under attack from the Red Duke. 
Keepers of the Flame are coming and try and help. The Banshee is charging in, but that doesn't mean the Banshee is going to get stuck in the Keepers of the Flame a bit and start taking some actual damage, hopefully. No, no, she gets away. Which is wise. You want to get these guys away. So, Scroll of Hoeth is going to stop him from being able to get his abilities off, and it's going to lower his recharge rate a lot. But, I imagine there's not a lot left in the pool right now, so this isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. But... You may as well use anything you've got, so um, he did. Anyway, Tekla's trying to run back through his lines. Uh, one of the Fireborn just exploded, which is awfully embarrassing. And now the Banshee is pretty surrounded, which is definitely a good thing. She's going to start taking some horrible damage. Um, I mean, these guys, they do have a melee attack of 45, compared to her defense of 38. So, still favorable. Still favorable, despite the anti-large having nothing to do with it. So, it's not good. You know, they've got good good weapon strength. They can get some good damage off the Banshee now that they, you know, now that she's pinned. Unfortunately, the Red Duke has died down. Teclis is looking pretty, um, pretty bad. But then I guess so is the Red Duke. So... Yeah, neither of the lords are doing particularly well here. This massive cat and mouse escapade has been going on for the entire battle. Somehow, there's no clear winner yet. It's a bit mad. So, uh, here, Banshee's still fighting. You can see a healing cap, finally. And Teclis is trying to get out of there. Nope, nope, he's coming for the Red Duke. Wow. The bull's on this guy. An LC on him, though. That puts his melee defense down to zero. His speed is way down, and his physical resist is down, which I don't think he really had any, but that's fine. Potion of Shiroi giving him 44% damage resistance. That could be what keeps him alive at this point. A couple of good hits on him, and he'd probably break. But that Potion of Shiroi just gives him enough damage resistance to shrug off some of the damage from any hit he may receive. The Red Duke being surrounded by Phoenix Guard, he's not able to sit there and battle Teclis. He has to get out. And the Potion Shroy has given Teclis some more health. He is now basically at his healing cap, so he can't really get much more out of it, but still. Here, though, the Banshee is starting to waver, which is excellent. This is just wonderful. They've both just been told to attack each other, um, so they're wheeling around to try and attack each other, and so they're just running around in circle. This is adorable. This is genuinely adorable. It's like a merry-go-round. Like a, some sort of haunted merry-go-round. Haunted, pompous merry-go-round. Anyway, so, uh, Teglis has been a little bit caught out. Um, ooh, ooh, Red Duke hits a lot harder. An awful lot harder. So here you can see all of the Phoenix Guard are panicking to try and save Teglis, who's only on 500 health. Less for the Red Duke, though he has managed to get an invocation to heck off, so suddenly he's in better stead. So Teglis, super, super damaged. Almost at his healing cap, but frankly, yeah, that potion is He's at his healing cap. There we go. So some damage resistance, which is good, which is good, but the Red Duke wasn't able to get a, a hit on him. So th since that damage resistance is instantaneous, he might have been better just to hit that sort of now, <laughs> seeing this guy on his tail. But anyway, he's going to start moving. Banshee's still chasing, going back into the Phoenix Guard. The Phoenix Guard are trying to push these guys off, and they are. Thing is, the Red Duke can keep going up into the air, and then diving on Teclis. He can keep doing that because the Banshee's on the ground and being very, very stubborn. So here Teclis is really bogged down. The Red Duke is coming in straight into the mix. And Teclis has managed to get out of it again. How? How has he done this? This is beautiful. So anyway, uh, Spearman, they have been terrified away thanks to the terror caused by the Banshee. And, um, you know, the Banshee are pretty surrounded. But when you look at this, the, these guys are not looking great anymore. Um, these are not healthy units of Phoenix Guard. If Teclis goes, these guys could get picked off. And, oh my word, that, that is bad. That is bad. Elsif, once again, he has no melee defense. He has 25 health, and he is broken. Luckily, he's broken through the Keepers of Flame, which half of them exploded just then, but we'll ignore that for now. But the Banshee's dead. So suddenly, the Red Duke can't afford to stay in the air. So he can't just get into the air and then chase off Teclis. Because while he's chasing Teclis... He's going to be losing leadership because he's the only one left and he is in the air. So he has no choice but to land, so he goes for the softer target of the Spearman. And Teclis is back with 25 health. Teclis is cool with it. He's got this. Unbelievable. So anyway, Red Duke has no choice but to try and counter, you know, sort of cycle charge between these two clumps. But he can't take off anymore. His leadership will depl just diminish and deplete. So I'm going to go deplenish, which is a new word. Anyway, he's dead. He's dead. It's a valiant defeat. Which, yes, for the for the replay of what this is, but not who sent it in. Yeah? I know, it's confusing. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. So Hero of Rome, or Hero of Human Power, which is odd because he's the elves. Guys, it's confusing. You know, I don't pretend to know what goes on in these people's minds. Um, but I like their battles, so... 
That's cool. Uh, but unbelievable. 475 kills for the Phoenix Guard, 298 for the Keepers of Flame. And they spent a lot of time fighting Graveguard and the Sternsman, you've got to remember. 60 kills for the Everqueen's Court Guard, probably mostly zombies, honestly. They weren't able to get a lot of good hits on stuff, unfortunately. They were bogged down the entire battle. But 108 for the Fireborn. The Fireborn did pretty damn well. You know, really helped chase off a lot of units. But I think the Fireborn could have been used a little bit more defensively. Because, uh, frankly, just the infantry pushing through the middle... You know, a few times, just a quick charge into that clump, send half of them flying, take half the health off, and then get back to defending what you're defending. Um, I think you can use the Fireborn a bit a bit more wisely than chasing things. The more time you spent chasing things, the less time you spent charging stuff. So I think using the Fireborn a little bit more defensively, it would have probably given the Everqueen's Court Guard a bit more respite. But this build worked wonders, and the amount of micro that he was able to apply to Teclis to keep Teclis out of trouble through all of that was absolutely ridiculous. Um, the fact the Red Duke wasn't able to take him out just throughout the entire battle, I think, is testament to, you know, how much effort he was putting in to keeping Teclis out of harm's way. It was pretty fantastic and an absolute pleasure to watch. And also, Reginald Puggington here, brilliant build. I love this. Just really a lot of stuff just to keep the high elves on their toes, to really help compromise the back line. Wasn't a huge expenditure in the zombie dragon, which you always see. Just having the red duke being this sort of, you know, very mobile character, knowing full well that he'll probably be hunting heroes that aren't going to be covered in armor. Because what's the chances that they're going to bring anyone but a Lariel or Teclis? He doesn't need the armor piercing of the zombie dragon. That's just a bigger target. So saving money there and being able to get, you know, more blood knights and Varric's reavers and, you know, a slightly more solid front line. Having the banshee, which was a huge help, only 41 kills, but a lot of terror, and that's 41 kills against some very elite things as well. So it's pretty superb. I really like this build. And just seeing something that's not relying on the Mortis engine, I think, is wonderful. Because given the typical high elf counter to that, you know, Lothan Seaguard and then Sisters of Avalon, just a Mortis engine is going to die in seconds. So it's great just to see him thinking, yeah, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to bring, you know, something I reckon will work better. I'm not going to spend my money on something that's just going to get sniped out in the first, you know in the first quarter. No point. And he didn't. And this build was wonderful. Um, great plays by both of them. And it really just came down to the wire. It was absolutely superb. I mean, a, one dice roll here or there would have changed the outcome completely, which is an absolute pleasure. So guys, um, this has been a long one. This has been a long one, so I should probably just stop waffling, right? So uh, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, guys.